Between the new Insta360 Ace Pro and the DJI Osmo Action 4, let's see which is the better action camera for skiing and snowboarding. Baby, baby, baby. Quick disclaimer, I have worked with both DJI and Insta360 quite heavily in the past, so grown to know the companies and their products quite well. And even though I'm still sponsored by Insta360, the goal of this comparison video is just to show you the results of both of these cameras and have you guys make up your own opinions about them. I will throw my thoughts in about both cameras at the end of this video if you guys want to hear that, but I'm going to try my best to remove any bias and have you guys be the judge. All right, starting off with settings I'm going to be using most of the time, 4K 60 frames per second. I like shooting at 60 frames versus 30 in the case that I want to slow some some bits of the footage down. Get a nice little, you know, slow, casual shot, but let's test it out. The lighting's really good right now. We're a little hot. Hello Osmo Action 4 and Ace Pro. Settings wise, both cameras again are shooting at 4K 16 and everything else including my ISO and exposure settings have been left on auto. Obviously using the selfie stick mount in this one and something that's really cool on both cameras is their ability to stitch out the selfie stick shown in the shot. This is super quick and easy to do. You can do it through the Insta360 app and the DJI Mimo app and I, I think both cameras do a great job. Just try and get a gauge for what shot you like the most. Hi. How are you? Couple of jibs, couple of hits. Little side hit this way. Oh. Come down this way. How's the stabilization looking too? pretty easy for any action camera nowadays to look great in optimal lighting conditions but at my home local resort big white we get a lot of big whiteouts so a huge thing for me and my filming needs is how do the cameras perform in low light? Both cameras have the same one third inch sensor, but the Insta360 Ace Pro has a larger aperture using an f2.6 versus the f2.8 on the Osmo Action 4. So this means the Ace Pro is simply capable of allowing more light to hit that sensor. And I think that's pretty evident in the footage. Additionally, the Ace Pro also includes what Insta360 calls their all new five nanometer AI chip. They claim when you turn on the camera's dedicated low light video mode called pure video, AI neural net Networks are used to denoise each frame while filming in real time. Not overly sure what this jargon means, but again, whether it's the new AI chip or the larger aperture or a combination of both, the Ace Pro's low light performance is absolutely exceptional. Take that shot of the first front two on the donkey, for example. Not only does the dynamic range look better on the Ace Pro, but when you look at the trees on either side of the run or far in the distance, they're less distorted and show more detail than the Osmo Action 4. It's not a massive difference, but you can see Insta360's battle against low light it is paying off. All right, since we have some better lighting, we're gonna try out HDR in the Insta360 Ace Pro. It automatically turns on when you do 4K 30. What do you think? Anything noticeable? How's it, how's it looking? Any different? Any different? Let's, uh, let's see over here. How about this way? Yeah, you like that? Now, hopefully there was enough footage for you guys to make a decision on which image you preferred. When it comes to my opinion, I think both cameras are pretty near equivalent during optimal lighting conditions for overall image quality and stabilization. They, they both look great. On bumpy sections and jumps, even with proper speed, the stabilization was phenomenal. And I, I think both cameras captured ample amounts of detail in the shot with great dynamic range. The blacks were black and the whites were white. It's pretty incredible to see how far action cameras have come since the very early days of GoPro. But the Ace Pro range champion over the Osmo Action 4 is in low light conditions. The overall image was organically brighter, there was more detail and structure captured, and the stabilization was better. You just can't compete with a, a larger aperture. There, there's more light hitting that sensor. I don't know how much of that AI technology and that new chip is helping out as well, but in low light settings, this thing was a beast. It's not to say the Osmo Action 4 doesn't come without any benefits. It is able to shoot at a wider field of view compared to the Insta360 Ace Pro, but both these cameras cameras are still going to fail to compete with the field of view a modern day 360 camera can capture. 360 degrees, it's as wide as you get. Yeah! Oh! Holy cow!
both of these cameras are built like tanks. Everything from the lens to the latches to the overall body feels incredibly solid. The Ace Pro in particular is built in collaboration with Leica, which manufactures some of the best camera glass on the entire planet. And beyond just these two cameras, I've dropped and crashed with a bunch of DJI's and Insta360's products in the past, and I've never had any issues with the body breaking or snapping. Obviously, if you're clocking a buck 50 into a tree, the thing is gonna be obliterated, but in most cases, you're gonna be safe. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to test out these guys in any extreme weather conditions. Uh, the, the winter up in Canada right now is extremely mellow. It's only like minus 10 degrees Celsius. But I can say the cameras I've used previously from both of these brands have held up extraordinarily well during temperatures that were below minus 25 degrees Celsius. The Insta360 X2 and X3 held up well during deep colds. Same with the Osmo Action 3, the previous generation camera to this one. And same thing for overheating. I've used cameras from both these brands that have held up just fine during plus 30 degree days out on the mountain bike. Can't say the same for GoPro and their world-renowned Enduro batteries, but these have held up just fine for me. And the battery life for both cameras is nearly equivalent. By the end of the ski day, there was only a marginal difference in battery life. Well, there you have it, man. Right before the three train finished, uh, the, the DJI, the Osmo Action 4 died, but there's only like, how much battery left on the Ace Pro? Oh, there's only, oh, oops. Oh, you can kind of see littlest sliver of battery left on the Ace Pro. Pretty much equivalent in terms of battery life. Now, from a hardware perspective, both of these are great action cameras, but where the Insta360 Ace Pro is really starting to excel is the software and all the other fun features on board. But they're calling the AI-powered mobile editing suite. It's something nobody asked for, but it's insane. Check this out, Insta360 app, you go over to the edit section, then you have this shot lab little menu that takes you through all these different boards. You got AI warp, sky swap, fly lapse, AI selfie stick, eraser, horizon flip, electric surge, spin me around and a whole bunch whole bunch more show off ai warp on this one you click on the little card use this theme pick the clip that you want to go over let's use a selfie stick shot and you got to select the frame or the portion of the clip that you want yeah right there two to four seconds of ai effect let's go a little bit farther yeah right there you can see the meniscus moving real nice there next and you can either click out and highlight which section you want to be ai warped or you can just go ahead and let the whole clip be warped i want to see if i can let the the whole clip be warped here. Let's go full and let's go for a retro and see what happens. So sick again, like something nobody asked for, but looks, dude, it's, it looks tight. I also tried just the selective AI warp tool on this switch lid front two out of the shotgun. Cyberpunk on it looks crazy. Also swapped it out in a, a space theme they had. Again, like totally useless, but so necessary at the same time. So cool. Insta360 has also added a bunch of features that make this camera really easy to use and highly accessible. For one, the touchscreen on the back of the Ace Pro is slightly larger than the Osmo Action 4s, which is helpful when you're trying to frame your follow cam shots. Secondly, the touchscreen on the back actually flips all the way up, which is helpful if you're using a selfie cam while you're skiing or snowboarding to once again, put yourself properly in that frame. Like pretty much every action camera nowadays, it also has voice control. The Osmo Action 4 has voice control as well so you can start pause stop recording all with your your voice but this one also has what they call gesture control so if i want to start a recording I can go like go like this that's that's actually really cool and then if i want to stop it that's actually this is my first time doing it that's actually pr pretty sick peace sign it's gonna snap a photo that was actually, that worked out way better than I expected. And if you find yourself filming faraway objects frequently, the Ace Pro does have two times optical zoom built into the camera. Uh, versus the DJI, which only has digital zoom. So you are gonna be sacrificing some image quality to achieve that zoom on the Osmo Action 4. I don't really zoom in with action cameras, but in the case you do, just something to be aware of. Now, when it comes to comparable features, both of these cameras are able to shoot at 4K 120 frames per second. So you can get buttery smooth slow-mo on both of these at a high resolution, which is super nice. The Ace Pro is capable of shooting at 8K. It's the first action camera to ever do that. I don't know why you would need to shoot 8K, but 
again if you want to this thing for for whatever reason is capable of doing so but other than the wider fov on the osmo action 4 there really isn't any other hardware or software features that you can get on the dgi offering versus what you can already get on the ace pro now there's one last thing i want to go over before i give you guys my recommendation it's for all you data capture nerds out there like myself i love to see how fast i'm going when i'm blasting down a run both dgi and insta 360 offer a remote that allows you to capture your gps your speed and a bunch of other data but the insta 360 ace pro is the first ever action camera that is able to integrate itself with an apple watch or a garmin device meaning if you already own an apple watch or a garmin device you don't have to shove out another 100 or 200 dollars to buy an external remote to capture some of the data you're looking for but if you're like me and don't have an apple watch or a garmin device you can either pick one up or insta 360 also created this gps preview device it's similar to the one dji makes for the osmo action 4 and the fact that you can capture a bunch of data like your speed and whatnot on it but it differs from the osmo action 4 remote in the fact that you can preview the live footage on screen here and you can actually go in and change all the camera settings purely from this device okay that was a lot of information but let's get down to uh the conclusion and who i think each camera is for if your needs are primarily good pov footage and for whatever reason you hate 360 cameras like the gopro max or the insta 360 x3 then i'd highly recommend the dji osmo action 4 produces a really good shot in that wide fov that 11 millimeter focal length is absolutely exceptional but if your needs are primarily for follow cams selfie stick angles or you're just looking for the action camera that performs the best in low light environments and offers really good dynamic range i, I would recommend the ace pro from insta 360 also comes with some exceptional software and some other really fun features <laughs> Hopefully this video was helpful. I tried my best to remove any bias. So if you guys do have any other questions, I'd love to answer them about each camera. Feel free to toss them in the comments below. We'll see you in the next one.